Welcome to the first flip video in the cognitive approach. Just to remind you that red is key vocabulary and green is key ideas. If you choose to watch this at home, don't forget to keep your finger on the pause button. So what is an approach to psychology? Surely psychology is psychology. No. Rather like human life, it's more complex and messy than that. As well as the five types of psychology you can look at on the screen, at A2 we'll be doing clinical psychology, forensic psychology and developmental psychology. You could also choose to study a field of psychology at university. There's disaster psychology, mindfulness psychology, positive psychology. Cognition refers to our mental processes. Attention, perception, thinking, language and memory. Cognitive psychology looks at how we process information to understand the thoughts that underpin emotions and behaviour. Social refers to any situation involving two or more members of the same species. Social psychology investigates social interactions such as interpersonal relationships, group behaviour, leadership, social influence and obedience. It looks at how all these impact on our emotions and behaviour even when the group is not present. Biological psychology aims to establish the biological basis of behaviour. Body structures and functions, in particular brain processing, are investigated. Learning, or behaviourism, is all about how our experience shapes us. It's about what we learn rather than what we start off with. And psychoanalysis, or Freudian approach to psychology, is what everybody imagines when you talk about psychology. They always imagine you sitting on a couch telling people about your childhood. Certainly, in the psychoanalytic approach to psychology, our childhood determines the person we become. I'd like to draw your attention to the checklist you've got. As well as defining each of the approaches, in the exam they can ask you to give a definition of each of the key words. Today, as well as looking at what is the cognitive approach, we're going to be looking at information processing. There are many things that cognitive psychologists do. It's one of the most experimental um, versions of psychology. A lot of lab experiments take place. They also look at when people have accidents or infections and brain damage and the resulting changes to personality, behaviour or emotions. And then we come to the computer analogy. An analogy is like a metaphor or a simile. In this case, is comparing the way the brain processes information to the way a computer processes information. This enriches artificial intelligence as they try and design systems that mimic the brain learning. It also enriches psychology as psychologists look and see how computers learn. In the cognitive approach, we do assume that there are cognitive processes happening in the black box. In the behaviourist slash learning approach, they're only interested at the stimulus and response. Personally, I think you can definitely see, sometimes you can see people's cogs whirring as you look at them. These are called cognition or cognitive processes. And in this approach, the mind is simply seen as a system for handling information. So here is the computer analogy. But hang on a minute, doesn't this seem over, overly simplistic? Surely we're more than a machine. This idea is therefore reductionist. Reductionist is when you reduce an idea in an attempt to explain a complex process. But when you oversimplify it, you reduce it so far down it becomes meaningless. 
So if we look at this baby, the baby's already got its hardware, it's got its central nervous system, its sensory perception. It's going to pull the cat's tail. When it pulls the cat's tail, the cat will scratch it and hiss it. And the baby will learn that cats are scary, scratchy things. There are problems with the computer analogy, and not everybody likes it. Perhaps the biggest problem is that we can't actually see what happens inside the black box, which is how it's got its name. Even with the most powerful PET scans and MRI scans, we can only see increased glucose uptake or increased blood flow. We assume that this shows that that's where the action is. A lot of pe people argue that's quite an assumption. It's a very, very strong approach, though, because of its scientific nature. It's also highly applicable. This means you can use it in everyday life. We use cognitive techniques to improve our revision. We also develop the cognitive interview technique that improves the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. And cognitive behavioural therapy is widely used in the NHS for a wide number of conditions, including depression and schizophrenia. Clive Waring has a memory problem. Have a look at the video. It takes about 40 minutes. Normally, at the end of a flip video, we're going to have a menu so you can choose what activities you have for the next lesson. Make sure you can define the computer analogy in a few sentences.